Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time for us to dyno test our 1,000 horsepower, 632 cubic inch big block Chevy. This has been an engine that has been in the works for almost a year at this point. It's a 632 big block Chevy running an 18 degree cylinder head, which requires a lot of custom parts. This is going to be a 13 to 1 compression engine, so it is going to run on C12 VP race fuel, and it's just bad to the bone. This is basically as good as it gets for a naturally aspirated 632 that still runs a single four barrel throttle body. It is fuel injected, it's not carbureted, as well as a traditional wet sump oiling system. It has a Jessel belt drive, it has a full Jessel rocker system, um, pin oiling solid roller lifters, huge push rods, heavy valve springs, and again, some really nice 18 degree cylinder heads. Motors like this can take a long time to make. They require a lot of special custom one-off parts, and one part can delay the build for about eight months, and that happened to us for the head studs. It's a low volume part that ARP doesn't make very often. These head studs are specific to these set of cylinder heads, and we got caught waiting for them. But the good news is they're finally here. We can move past that. We can run this engine on the dyno and finally see how much horsepower she's gonna make. To control the engine, we're gonna run Holley Sniper Stealth 4500 throttle body. It's basically a replacement for a Dominator style carburetor, but we get all the added accuracy and efficiency of fuel injection. To control the timing, we're gonna run a Holley dual sync distributor that way we can exactly program our timing curve throughout the RPM range to give this engine the best torque and horsepower possible. Because it is a solid roller engine, I'm gonna just let it idle and come up to temperature. Once we are at full operating temperature, I'm gonna pop off the valve covers because we need to lash the rocker arms. So we will get one more chance to see those beautiful pieces of art in just a second. So I'm gonna let it idle and warm up the temp and we'll be back in just a second. The engine is now up to operating temperature, about 180 degrees, and I let it sit there for about five or 10 minutes that way the whole engine can really heat soak and get nice and warm. Now it's time to pop the valve covers off and get to lashing. look at the valve train on this engine. Again, it runs a shaft mount system. So all the rockers are tied to each other. So all the stress and the load from one rocker is redistributed across the shaft into the cylinder head, giving us much more accuracy as the rocker arm opens the valve tip. I just finished hot lashing the motor so I can put the valve covers back on and continue our tune-up process. The engine is put back together. It's time to put some C12 fuel in the tank and fire it back up. Because this engine has a pretty large camshaft, as you can imagine, I'm targeting 14 to 1 AFR at idle and cruise, and then wide open throttle, we're going to start at 12 and a half to 1 air fuel ratio. Uh, we can see here that the self-learning is working and active. And then for my timing, I'm going to idle this guy at about 20 degrees initial timing. Um, wide open throttle timing, we're going to start very conservative at 28 degrees. Um, 
It is 13 to one compression and we are running a leaded C12 VP fuel. So that's gonna help us uh, basically eliminate any chances of detonation. But because this is a new combination and it has a lot of exotic parts, we're gonna start really soft and then slowly creep up to it. So I think for this first dyno pool, I'm gonna pull it from probably 3000 to 6000 RPM and just see how things look. It is running a dual sync distributor and I have already confirmed that it is in the exact location using the static timing check. So with all that said, with 28 degrees in the motor, let's go ahead and bring it up to three grand and we can make our first hit to 6000 RPM. kind of a lot going on it looks like we lost fuel pressure on that pool and so I'm gonna take a look at our fuel system and see what's going on with that because we should have plenty of fuel pump for this much engine the fuel pump we have is the Holly brushless uh, twin dominator pumps or the VR series pump so it's got enough fuel pressure maybe there were just some air in the lines um, I made sure that the ground wasn't connected causing the pump to only run at 50% duty cycle uh, because this is a self-learning EFI system uh, and we had some fuel pressure issues on that first pool, we want to clear the learning table so that it forgets those problems. So let's go ahead and bring her up again. Make a second hit. Watch our fuel pressure and see what happens. Perfect. So yeah, there was probably just some air in the lines from when we transferred it from 93 octane to C12. Check this graph out though. Really smooth pool. You can see we made almost 900 horsepower at six grand, still climbing. Torque is just starting to go flat. I think moving forward, I'm gonna start the pools at 3,500 RPM, but I feel confident and comfortable to go ahead and stretch its legs to 6,500. Let's make a quick edit here and pull it from 3,500 to 6,500 RPM. And let's go ahead and make our second hit. Again, we only have 28 degrees of timing in the engine. Nice layover at 927 on the horsepower. Peak torque is about 850. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an oil change and put some VR1 2050 in it now that we have a few hits on the original break-in oil. And then we can uh, pull some truck plugs, take a look at them and make a judgment call and then start adding some timing back in the motor. Just finished changing the oil in the engine. We got the original break-in oil out of the motor and we got it topped off with some 2050 VR1. Let's get her fired back up here. I'm gonna let the engine idle for a little bit to come up the temperature, uh, let the oil get some temperature in it as well. And then we'll do another pull without any changes and just let the engine kind of keep breaking in the piston rings and sealing up for a second. With the VR1 oil now in the motor, we have solid up to 95, 85 to 95 pounds of oil pressure throughout the curve. And let's go ahead and overlay the previous pool. And you can see they're pretty much exchanging. The EFI system's still dialing in a little bit, but what we're looking for is consistency. And so I'm gonna give it one more pool on 28 degrees of timing, and then we'll put two more degrees in it.
Okay, it looks like 9.30 is the most we're gonna make at this timing. So like I said, I'm gonna put two more degrees in and let's see how the curve falls. Okay, the red curve is with 30 degrees of timing, and it looks like we picked up almost 35 horsepower. So now we're at 965. And you can also see it's carrying a little bit further as the cylinder pressure drops. So let's pull it another 200 RPM, 6700. And I'm gonna add two more degrees up to 32 now. good now so 991 horsepower and it's just carrying that rpm nicely so we're almost there it looks like so what i am noticing though is the extra two degrees of timing did not make a difference from 4000 to 4500 and so i'm going to go back to 30 degrees below 4500 and then i'll probably run 32 degrees at 4500 and then let's try 34 throughout the rest of this curve we go a thousand seven horsepower on 34 degrees um, and actually we picked up everywhere even down low so that's really encouraging to see um, still making more horsepower curve is repeating really nicely um, because this is a race engine and we do want to find the maximum I'm gonna keep pushing and let's put two more degrees in it so we're at 36 total now and uh, see what it does here we go Still making more power, 1,026 and 902 torque. Looking really good so far. So if it's still picking up power, <laughs> let's put another degree in it. Basically, I want to keep adding timing until I find where it falls off. It doesn't make a difference. And you can see we're kind of there again, down here at the lower RPM range. And peak torque only gained a little bit, whereas at peak horsepower, at the very end, it's still gaining a lot. And that's because the cylinder pressure is dropping inside of the engine, so the extra ignition timing can help carry that curve a little bit further. Okay, that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for it to stop picking up power. So now we know we can back it down to 36 degrees through the pool after 4,500 RPM, and that's a safe spot for the tune-up. Now that the timing curve is dialed in to match this engine, let's play with the feel for a little bit and see if a richer tune-up or a leaner tune-up will give us more or less horsepower. So instead of targeting 12 and a half to one AFR, we are now targeting 13.0 to one AFR. Okay, a little bit of a breakup, so probably not headed in the right direction, pulling a little bit of uh, a little bit of fuel out of it. Yep, and we can see on that graph, it did not pick up horsepower anywhere. So let's go the other way and let's target 12.0 to 1 AFR. So 
Same thing, engine's not happy there. So 12 and a half to one AFR seems to be the sweet spot for this combination. To back it up and make sure we don't have anything else going on, let's make another pull at 12.5 to one AFR target. Okay, so it's actually hitting the rev limiter. I just turned it on before I started messing the AFR targets, and I think I might have set it a little bit too low, so that's why we have a breakup. Um, the fact that it's losing a little bit of horsepower in the middle is probably just due to heat soak. I have done 13 hits pretty much back to back on this engine. So I'm gonna let it cool off for a little bit, let the oil come back down in temperature just a hair, and let's come back and play with it some more in probably 20, 30 minutes. Engine has cooled off for a little bit, I think we're going to make one more RPM pool on this engine and see how much it makes with everything nice and cooled off instead of back-to-back -back thrashing on the motor. And then I think we're done with this guy. Let's see what it does. So 1,027 horsepower is the most that I was able to get out of this engine combination on our dyno. The motor is now off the dyno and we'll be shipping out to the customer very soon. And all in all, this was a really cool, super fun project for us to build and create. Really happy and proud with the results. The valve covers are just mocked up right now. We're waiting on special head gaskets to come in, or valve cover gaskets. So let's get one last peek at that Jessel shaft mount rocker system. So cool. And then we have a nice set of smetting fabricated valve covers with some dual breathers to go on top. Pretty sweet combo. Thank you all for watching. Next week, we're gonna start a build series on a 427 cubic inch standing mile land speed LS designed engine. See y'all then.